Hi, I'm Jonathan Smith with Prestige Yacht Sales. You can call or text me at 860-514-3763 or email me at jsmith at prestigeyachtsales.net. Today we're looking at a 1988 Pearson 37 Mark II. The uh, current owner's had her since 2012 and it's been at Noink Village Boatyard, a very highly regarded marina in Noank, Connecticut, uh, ever since he's owned it. And he's done quite a extensive list of upgrades, including new air conditioning with reverse cycle heat, a new generator, um, new canvas, the electronics, etc. It's a well-kept boat. Um, one way I can tell is how nice all the woodwork is. It's all varnished and in great shape. You can actually see some of the electronics behind me and here at the helm. And so it's a nice example. And um, it, based on what I've seen so far, I think you're gonna like it. Hey, let's go take a closer look. Here's Smedley Prize. Looking at the port side. Bright sun this morning, so it's looking a little dark, but that is a white hull. New Dodger, Bimini, the canvas looks good. Uh, this boat's always been professionally maintained. Well, not always, but since 2012, it's been professionally maintained at Knowing Village Boatyard with many upgrades along the way, including new air conditioning, a new generator, new electronics, and more. There's a link to the listing below in the description that I'll have more details. I'm kind of going by memory right now. Here we are on the sunny side. You can see actually the teak looks good too. It looks uh, varnished. The, the tow rail. The eyes and glass is very clear and we're gonna go aboard and get a closer look, but Raymarine uh, radar and I do see lazy jacks. So you're taking a look at it for the first time, just like I am. Here's our newer Raymarine electronics. We've got a Raymarine hybrid touch, GPS chart plotter, multifunction display at the helm and an autopilot controller, and it is a wheel pilot. You can see that here. And there is a radar unit up on the mast, so it has radar. We've got some stereo speakers, a life sling, um, looks like a homemade outboard motor bracket. I do not know uh, if an outboard, I do not believe an outboard and dinghy comes with the boat though, so. The uh, non-skid looks pretty good in the, the cockpit. We got winch covers. I don't know if you can see, but the woodwork's in great shape. It's varnished, you got a varnished tow rail. Oh, well, I was gonna pop open the lockers, but they're locked. I'm gonna have to get the key. Uh, here we have a nice table that opens up and that's also varnished in great shape. And a little line holder board here, also varnished in nice shape. And we also have saloon style doors which were not original so that's a nice touch makes it easy to get in and out of the boat and look at our eyes and glass it's clear you probably don't even see it it's so clear you can't even see it so we're looking forward uh the door rads are stainless which is nice the handrails are in good shape we'll walk forward actually here's some more electronics we're going to have a wind instrument a speed depth log and another so multi display so you can put speed on one and depth on the other pretty much is what i would do walking forward Joko looks to be in good shape as mentioned the handrails are in nice shape roller furling genoa and the umbrella strip is looking good. Those are uh, sacrificial. You got to replace them every, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so. I do see a rock nut anchor, which is one of the preferable anchors on boats these days. People love them. Uh, I do not know if there's a windlass. I'm going to have to undo. He's got a little safety line for his mooring, so I'm going to have to undo that to get in the anchor locker. Give me a second. Up the anchor locker, there is not a windlass, but we have a chain. Quite a bit of chain and quite a bit of road. I don't know the exact numbers. So you're gonna be doing the anchor drill manually on this boat, which isn't too bad on a 37 foot boat. Looking aft, mainsail cover looks good. Radar up there. Yeah, look at that, the decks are nice and clean.
Lazy Jacks, traditional mainsail cover with Lazy Jacks. And that nice uh, Bimini Dodger and connector covers the whole cockpit area. Taking a look at that tow rail. That looks great too. In the uh, port locker, by the way, the generator is underneath this metal box. So that's like a sound shield. So that's the generator and there's a new fuel tank under there. And you can see all our storage on these racks. Big, big locker. Similar situation with shelves, our flare kit, winch handles, fire extinguishers, horn. And I do see batteries in here. And I can't tell what those are, 4Ds. I'll have to check the spec sheet on that. Some fenders. I got the table folded out. Those wings go in to make a smaller table if you don't need it fully extended. And then it folds away as well. All right, let's take a look down below. In our salon, you see a big L-shaped settee to port. I got the table wings out. And that allows somebody to dine from uh, the starboard side as well with two kind of bucket seats to starboard big big galley a lot of storage a giant sink microwave interestingly this boat has an electric stove so i don't know if that's original but it does have a generator so to cook you're going to fire up your generator and that also allows you to use things like your toaster and your coffee maker and your microwave charge your batteries, make hot water when the generator's going. Here's our refrigerator. There's a cold plate up here to that side. So a really good sized galley. While we're here, we'll look at the floor. And I believe this floor has been redone. Don't think that's original. It looks nice. It's kind of a modern, um, you know, I'm not sure what you call that, pergo type flooring. Nav station, dedicated nav station, big enough for charts. Another little bucket seat that rotates. And we have uh, inverter, battery charger, voltmeters, AC, electric system. Running light indicator and some DC switches as well. Got a stereo, a little tiny TV with a DVD player that's kind of a little obsolete at this point, but what's nice about this boat is you have this big opening in the bulkhead that you can open up to get more air and give the boat a bigger feel. And then you can close it up you can see it slides up, close it up for uh, privacy. And we'll take a look at the forward stateroom. And it's what I would call an island style uh, center line berth. So each person can get on and off without disturbing the other storage to port and to starboard. Uh, some drawer storage underneath the bed. Stereo speakers up here as well, and some fans. This boat does have air conditioning and reverse cycle heat, and you got a big opening hatch with a screen. And then here's our closing bulkhead thing. Pretty cool. And looking, we're looking aft through the salon right now, back to the galley and the nav station. Drop this leaf down, maybe. Here we go. And he's got an apparatus on this table that it lets it go up and down easily. I haven't operated it, but I can kind of see how it works there. And I assume that's to drop it down and you could probably make a, another berth out of it.
Take a look at our head. Really big head area with a large separate shower with a glass door, as you can see there. That's pretty cool. And there's a seat in there. All right, I got more information on this table. It drops down, can become a coffee table. And you drop it way down and uh, the settee over here pulls out and this becomes a really good sized bed as well, which is kind of nice because you only have a forward stateroom and then you've got this convertible salon and that's it. In the back, there's no quarter berths. You get two giant lockers instead. So it's, you know, honestly, it's, it's a better boat for a cruising couple than a family. Um, and then if you occasionally do have guests, you have to convert the table for overnight stuff. So, um, you know, it's a comfortable boat though. I mean, that, that forward stateroom's really nice. Uh, great for, you know, a solo person or a couple, but maybe not ideal for a family. I mentioned the stove is electric, microwave, things. So if you're going to do cook, cooking, you're going to turn on your generator. Um, and I just found out that the refrigeration as well is AC only. So this refrigeration is only going to work when you're plugged into shore power or you're running your generator. It's not a DC refrigerator. That could be swapped out if you wanted a DC refrigerator. All right, taking a look at the Yanmar engine. There are 3,669 hours on this Yanmar. And it's been professionally maintained by Knowing Village Boatyard. In fact, I can see their checklist here since 2012. They're really good. Look at their, you know, check off stuff. Uh, there is a side panel that gets you access to the side where the dipstick is and the oil filter from the head area. And, you know, it looks good. Uh, things I usually, usually look for is, you know, rust uh, on the paint or something like that from leaks. And I do not see that. Uh, it is a 3HM30... Is this a 36F, I think? So, you know, some people might say it's high hours. However, um, you know, these engines, I, I know a guy who's got like seven, 8,000 hours on one of these. So if you maintain them well, they'll just keep on going. Once again, I'm Jonathan Smith with Prestige Yacht Sales. You can call or text me at 860-514-3763. Or email me at jsmith at prestigeyachtsales.net. Please reach out to me if you want to talk about this 1987 Pearson 37 Mark II in more detail. Uh, as mentioned, highlights include new generator, uh, electronics, the canvas, excellent woodwork, um, air conditioning with reverse cycle heat, and much more. Check the listing details below in the description. All right, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks.